the good mother that you think you are. My daughter's words washed over my skin, leaving me raw. The numbness that I found safe in for so long was burned away in one sentence. In one sentence, she snatched away the facade that I worked so hard to keep up. You are not the good mother that you think you are. She stood face to face, eyes locked, with barely a breath between them. My daughter, now in her early 20s, me in my early 40s, well, if it wasn't good enough for you, you could just go. I was frustrated and hurt. And she left. I was not the good mother that I thought I was. I was the mother that I had fought so hard not to become. I was the mother surviving. Surviving motherhood looked like working 12 to 16 hour days. It looked like waking up in the morning and dreading the moment my foot touched the floor because I knew that my next moment of rest wouldn't come until the end of the day when I fell back into bed exhausted. It looked like always being almost there but never being close enough. See, I began my journey into motherhood at age 16 and Although my pregnancy wasn't planned, I was excited about my blessing to come. I did all the things. I went to class, read the books, I even bowed to you for cloth diapers. <laughs> when I graduated from school a year early, I ran across the stage and straight to the arms of my four month old son. Oh, the places we would go. I had all the enthusiasm, but none of the plans or information I needed to put us on the pathway to success. But then, I met him, the man of my dreams. I fell in love deeply and quickly. And when I asked him what we do if I got pregnant, he said, well, we'll get married and have a happy, healthy family of our own. Six months later, I was expecting our daughter. And six months after that, at 18 and 20, we were married. I was up for the challenge, I mean, for the whole wife. Over the next decade, our family grew to have three beautiful daughters, they're still, <laughs> and two handsome sons. My babies and I filled our days with finger paints, walked to the park, dancing in the living room to Jill Scott. We said our prayers, who kisses, and who kites when the sun was high and the wind blew just right. Now my marriage, it had its challenges, but we were young and we had time, right? Money problems, relationship problems, life problems, but worked hard, we'd be fine, right? Well, not quite. I remember one day I was sitting and playing around with a phone that my husband thought was broken, only for it to pop on with a message from a woman telling him that she was pregnant with his baby. After I scraped myself up off the floor, calmed down enough to start thinking I called my husband to tell him about his baby on the way. When he came home that night, that Negro had the unmitigated boy to lay his head on my chest and cry. <laughs> Not a little boo big old crocodile tears. And I sat there under the weight of him feeling stuck and suffering. Do I stay in the middle of this mess? or leave and be a single mother with little to no support. Well, I decided to stay and try to work it out. I mean, that's what good church wives do, right? And baby, I did the most. At first, I prayed and fasted the most. But then I worked and partied the most. And all I learned always the answer. And after 16 years, I became a single
single mother, and I felt lost. After my divorce, I started going to therapy. I had one major breakthrough, decided I was fixed, and I stopped going. I mean, my life was non-stop, so I kept it pushing the only way I knew how. All gas, no brakes. My babies and I were starting our own new rhythm, and then, bam, the trauma roller coaster started. My child support stopped. I was dating men ranging from Mr. Wrong to Mr. Wronger. And I was helping my family out financially so much that my own lights got shut off. I was beyond overwhelmed. Then my ex-husband went to prison and made me a single, single man. And I was terrified. I didn't have time to curl up in a ball, pull the covers over my head. I had to warm it up. I pushed my feelings to the side and hid myself behind lists and make it non-stop schedules for me and my baby days. School for me, school for them, work for me, activities for them, second job for me, parent-teacher conference, family events, brush your teeth. Didn't I tell you to take that meat off the freezer for dinner? The more I focused on crossing goals off of my list, the less I paid attention to what really mattered. I forgot about sitting down at the table to eat at the end of our long days, trips to the dollar movies, and random Saturdays spent downtown, just the six of us. The softness and beauty of motherhood was slipping away, and my kids started feeling like items on one of my never again checklists. Now don't get me wrong, there was food in the refrigerator and school trips were paid for, but emotionally, I had to check it out. I was a mother existing. And then it happened. Another horrible breakup. And I decided enough was enough. I started going to therapy and I stayed in therapy. And yeah, I had been going to church, but for me, that just wasn't enough. After I had the argument with my oldest daughter, I went on to have similar arguments with all of my children over the next couple years. Thankfully, quarantine in 2020 brought me the space and time to process and feel the emotions that I have been avoiding for the past decade. I learned a lot during my shadow work. I have been held to very high standards as a child, and I carry all of that into my adult life. I was so used to seeing the women around me pour from empty cups that I accepted that as a birthright. As I continued on my journey, uncovering those emotions, I learned to create, receive, and save some for myself. Some peace some joy, some laughter, some rest. I learned the beauty and the power of no, the amazing freedom of boundaries, and how to deal with disappointment in healthy ways. I learned the power of grace and how we use it on ourselves. We move forward from places of love and power instead of guilt and shame. As black women, single or otherwise, we have the right to be still, to cry, to be angry, to be supported. Our black children deserve the same. Healing from the generations before me, forgiving without apology when necessary, and accepting accountability are all parts of rebuilding myself and ultimately my relationships with my children. And no, it is not all flowers and butterflies, but taking the time to have 